language core. Thank you for tuning in. Tonight I'm going to continue uh, talking about you know how the female elements in our languages and writing are gradually being eliminated and hidden. Uh, but before I do that I would like to show the no normal slides to give you a rough idea of what I'm talking about. And yeah this is the program's name and because it sums up uh, more than 30 years of my travel, travel experience and out of that uh, more than 20 years I concentrated in the uh, searching of the connection of all languages and I came up with this image for you is a basket starfish you can see that we all share one single core every single family is just a branch we are not a tree every branch you know came out from the same core and all the languages we speak you know are just remnant of the ancient language we pay too much attention in the grammar so as long as we look at language that way we are on, on equal ground and of course I'm presenting to you a women's uh, perspective and also uh, from an uh, Asian point of view so uh, I think there is some valid points you know that I can bring to you um, okay um, as I said um, Thank you very much and uh, I'm going to continue and uh, I want you to have the idea of that basket starfish with that uh, same core that everyone is just branched out. So we are standing on equal ground so no one is above the others and um, I'm going to continue with tonight's slides uh, showing you how uh, the female element is gradually hidden away. Okay, um, here I go. So Okay, um, again, uh, I'll show you, you know, the image of uh, the cover of a book and you can see that this is the fetus, you know, you can see very clearly the umbilical cord that continue and become, you know, this structure right here, uh, a, a vacuum, a cavity that wrap around the baby where the baby grow, uh, grows up inside, okay? And I also uh, keep drawing this to you again and again. This is a hieroglyph, he sang, Chinese hai sang. Uh, uh, Greek he and also uh, the Hebrew uh, he sound, each sound, which gradually become uh, simplified, become your writing of H in the Western world, okay? And then um, why uh, I want to show you this is because I want to show you how the concept of that thread right there actually become the vacuum and um, you will see that a number of writing also shows that. First of all, there, there are different ways of showing some emptiness. First of all is the Ugaritic using three lines like the air itself and this is the second one is the Chinese also we say hey as a very light H as the air okay as Hawa in Arabic also and also haze in English and um, this is all actually a Libyan writing it's also an H writing and then um, instead of being the empty empty uh, light uh, haze as an H uh, you can also understand it as the uh, cavity of the female and as the um also using an H sound but then a little bit heavier going back to the thread uh, her sound and this is hum right there uh, either it's a female vulva or the uh, 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 pond you know of liquid you know where you hold the liquid and this is Chinese writing you as you can see we say hum or hum it's also you know a pot a hole uh, a pit on the ground where you can hold water or actually uh, a niche uh, and also you know a uh, uh, shine itself so um, also we have another writing we say hum right there it has to do with pregnancy as hummel in Arabic as well and again um, the, the chord as I, you can see the CH later become uh, the K sound and actually the CH uh, is easily you know uh, originated from the H sound uh, as a KH so this is a lot of confusion in writing and the mutation of sound right there 
and um, again all this writing right there and I show you the Greek word echo again and again this is uh, in ancient uh, I mean classical Greek that starts to uh, talk about the bloodline of God or the immortal uh, they believe that there is a long uh, is a line running uh, through the body of the God which is called echo and it's uh, like the high sound right there in all other languages as you can see uh, this bloodline I will show you the female line this is the umbilical cord uh, you know forming this uh, what we call the the Horian and in English now you call it Korean and, and uh, if you look back the Greek word it should be Horian again and then again it's uh, it goes back to the cavity the how has hole and hole where the baby grows up in and I've changed all this to blue color to show you there is a very very uh, subtle change of concept from the thread to the emptiness okay and then you have already seen this two writing and the interesting point happens here this is the ancient Hebrew uh, her sound uh, 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 I mean writing and then this is the Greek they both you know are, are, are the fifth position of the uh, writing system uh, as you can see the Greek sound should actually carry a H as, as the ancient uh, Hebrew as they were very very closely tied together and then uh, the, as I said the fifth position but then interestingly you will see that from that onwards you know they, they hide the H sound and they begin to treat it as just a vowel and that's why the Hebrew Hawa and um, which is also pun with the Hawa uh, air also in Arabic actually become the Eve in Greek okay so the H is hidden at the beginning and at the end you will see um, uh, that uh, I chase these words back and I finally see that there is a very interesting uh, female uh, element in our language and in our beliefs. In ancient Sumerian, there is an ancient uh, goddess of the earth. It's called Ki or Kir or Kisha. And the Ki is actually has a lot to do with the later Gaia. The Ke and the Ge also mutate into each other. And a lot of the uh, uh, flow word, you know, to do with the sound too in a lot of languages which I have already talked about in when I talk about the G sound you know many weeks ago you can go back to your YouTube and you can find it a lot to do with the ground or the floor and and anyway I will continue on here to, but you have to pay attention to the picture right there um, this is the artifact they, they found out in Sumerian this is uh, what they understood as the uh, earth pivot uh, that which is the axis of the earth as you you can see the Greek word axona, which become the English axis, you know, either the English X or the Greek also shows actually is the spinning of that thread right there, the center. Um, as human beings started, you know, twirling a thread, they actually use that concept, you know, for the understanding of the universe. And this is the ancient Greek uh, uh, writing. As you can see, they did really uh, draw out the pivot as long as you know what they were understanding there you actually can see the meaning in all these symbols so they are not random symbols they are actually pictures in a certain way and the Chinese actually have the same writing we understand it as the king or the leader because in the in the verbal colloquial uh, history in the whole of China we always believe that the king or the chief emperor is always the uh, uh, lead, I mean, um, joining between the sky, the earth, and, and the human being. So he actually joined the three as also the axis of the whole universe. So it's basically the same idea. So I can actually read this as a Chinese word. Okay. And later on, you know, the uh, Greek word now, you understand the k is written as this. One part is taken the air, sa air sign, and the other sign is really, you know, the uh, trailing uh, axle of the, the, the trailing thread. Okay.
and then I show you the Cypriot, Cypriot uh, script. You know, you can see that uh, the uh, word actually follows on. You have to look at the picture. Every culture pick up a different aspect of the this goddess. You know, to show for Cy the Cypriot, this is a K K E K. Okay, and the Sanskrit, you can see that the Ksa actually means their hair. Uh, as you can see, uh, as I, I will show you uh, in the coming uh, symbols, you will see very clearly that air comes out uh, very distinctly as the uh, uh, sign of the goddess. You will see the goddess is like this and the Ugaritics show it like this and then the Chinese show the air like this. Uh, how do you show the air but by the flowing hair, right? So this air and that hair is actually there is a connection between the two in a human concept that is very difficult to explain by words. You have to understand it as a picture, okay? And again, I show you all this uh, each sound and each writing and the Phoenician uh, still use this as a her sound and the fifth position again and the, the ancient Hebrew took it as a lighter H sound but they are in the same position the same writing okay and then the Hebrew obviously use it for all kinds of thread and also a female endingness as well as a grammar okay so as you can see of course you use the hair to make thread so they are all connected as idea the Greek started you know to lose that H sound they told you that it is just a vowel become the apple but it's also in the fifth position and then um, uh, there are a few words that you have to pay attention that happen in Greek which is the fifth uh, uh, alphabet which is the epsilon you know they lost the, they hide the H sound and then the real H you know the heavy H which was normally in the X position they write it out but they they pronounce it as eta once again it's like a vowel right there they 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 tell you that you know the H is not supposed to have sound so they silence it right there and then the other interesting uh, writing is the sixth position that's why they vilify the six because the sixth position is actually uh, come from the prototype of the hair of this woman and then it has a sound of vowel wow and an F, you know, this is uh, all the mutation sound. Of course, if, if the F, you will understand it easier because it has a lot to do with the female, okay? And then um, it, in this, you know, they don't even want to call it by its name. They keep calling it digamma, uh, di but it means it's two gamma, you know, they, they put another name there to hide the name and it is very interesting that a lot of things are done there so uh, later on in Greek this thing appeared to disappear totally and only Latin carries on and of course you would know it is an F right and all the about fecundity female and also uh, I give you a German word Frau which is a uh, female and of course, you know, it disappeared in Greek, as I said. So um, I will come back to this shape. You know, now you look at this, you know, I, as I said, you know, the H writing has a lot to do with also the S and the Z. Uh, in the whole world system, either you call the rope the thread uh, by the H system, or a lot of the system will be called them by S system, or some of them will be called them by K system. So they all move around these three different systems. And... Um, as you throw the thread two into one to make a stronger thread and you will see that uh, a lot of the words also follow the S. As I said, the hieroglyph, this is uh, obviously the hair. And then the, the hieroglyph and the uh, Arabic use a similar symbol and they use Sha to mean hair. So as you can see, they follow the S system sound, okay? So uh, it's a little bit complicated here, but bear with me, okay? And then you will see that uh, uh, I will show you the Chinese. The Chinese has a lot of this writing showing the female and then the brush, also the hair. It has a lot to do with female, the brush, the also hair, and also with eternity. It's all related to this ancient goddess of the, the, of, uh, the long hair, female. And then uh, I come back to show you this hay, very interesting thing. And then because the female hair was used long ago, you know, to show this... Uh, 
uh, longevity, eternity. This is eternity sign in ancient uh, hieroglyph. And then slowly, because of the writing change, you will see that uh, the, the ancient uh, Hebrew and the Phoenician started to use this to represent this. This is actually two same sign, and but the only difference is that it had a pair of hands. This is the time when all of a sudden you see, uh, whenever you're supposed to see God, you see his hands presentation. And even until now, whenever you draw God in the Christian world, it's always drawn by the hand, okay? And then, uh, all, but then because of the adding of that, it be, it yield the reading of Jehovah. You know, this is all, everything read, read into what we understand now, okay? But the Chinese actually have this, the hand manipulating the thread. We call it high. And then uh, we have the ancient ancestral uh, god of God, of, of, the, of the Chinese. We pronounce it as hey. This hey actually in our head, you know, we understood also as the sun, as the air. And as image, it appears as this. As you can see, this is twisting around. This is also twisting around. And both of them actually uh, presents an axis, you know, of the universe. And as you can see, the Greek actually draw it out. So no matter how, you have to understand it as a twisting thing. And also, uh, if I can uh, bring you to the yin and yang sign, you will also see that it is the churning of the whole universe that forms everything. And then uh, we call this male side the hay, and then we call the female side the wa. As you can see, this wa, you can connect it to this female vow, wa or va, okay? So the sound is actually identical. This is the female side, but as you see, uh, it, it disappeared in the Western world, you know, uh, since the Greek time and then they start to vilify all these uh, female symbol and this is also the time when you begin to see that the female is obligated to cover the hair because the hair itself is a sign of power and uh, it's very natural the more hair you have the more fertile you are as a female and um, if you look at the Bible story you will also understand that Samson again this is follow the S sign okay Samson is famous because his uh, symbol of power is also came from the hair so there's a lot of hiding you know by hiding the women's hair okay I will go on I'll go on to see, show you this axis of infinity since the ancient time. This is the Kia, which become the Gaia in Greek, you know, which is the mother goddess of earth. And then, of course, you know, later, you know, uh, by the very macho world, you know, it is also actually vilified because, you know, Hitler started to use this symbol uh, to express his really patriarchal, you know, world, you know, and, and which actually originated from a very matriarchal world you know so but if you look at other religion you know these signs as exist you know all through the uh, the east and west you know through all the ages but of course you know um, ignoring all those negative signs you know even this sign is expressed as eternity in Buddhism so in Hinduism in Buddhism and also in a lot of Eastern Europe you will see a lot of this sign right there but it doesn't stop right there as a symbol as a sign it actually existed and write in writing as well this is Sumerian you know uh, as Ki or Gilim and as a, a ch trailing I mean uh, trailing trailing around you know as the thread which makes the mat the carpet and everything and this is exactly the same sign you see the bull head right there for the Chinese it has the sound of Y okay it's W okay and it is trailing around you know for us it means the either the circle or actually it also goes back to the trilling of the thread or, or the making of the leather thread okay and then uh, the system follow you know by the what you call the hero sign of the Jesus Christ and you see all this the, the bull head was actually added there and that's why other than the X right there other than the trilling you have they have added the A right there because that A as an unseen energy was put there as a very macho sign or Although at the very beginning, this uh, bull horn there was was actually neutral. You know, it wasn't 
uh, only macho. It was expressed as an energy, both as female or, or male. But as the A world, uh, as I said, you know, uh, as they worship the war god Ares, and that's when the Greek world, the Roman world, you know, bring out a lot of warlike, you know, mentality, that the whole world system become, you know, what we understand this day in a very patriarchal setting. Okay? So everything was turning. And okay, I let me go to the very uh, female world now to show you the source of life, you know, represented as the water and the sun. And first of all, you understand this, you know, as a source or as the sun, you can understand it's water source. You no, know, you can understand it's the sun. As writing, you have this ayn in Arabic and also ayn in uh, also in uh, Hebrew and also an in Chinese. I in English, okay, and Iranian, they have also this libation dish, you will see that they actually make the symbol out itself, and the Greek has all this libation dish, you know, you will ask why they make it so big, you can hardly hold it, you know, because the wider this bowl, it actually shows the wider that birth source is, and uh, they call it by different name, you, you can look at it as a nipple, you can also understand it as the umbilical point of that, and then as uh, you can, they can also express it as the sun's ray coming down because at that time, you know, either than the water source coming out, they can also because they worship Apollo, you know, so it also in a way they understand it as the sun's ray coming down. So it actually depends whether you look at it as a patriarchal view or the matriarchal view. View either it is the uh, the water source or the sun source. Okay, and then they have still maintained this her sound to mean human being in hieroglyph and I want to show you a number of signals that symbols that you know shared to show you how similar the ancient understood you know about fertility and this is the ancient uh, Egyptian hieroglyph you know this is the vulva and as hum as I said you know this is the empty vessel as hum in or hum in Chinese in Cantonese pronunciation okay and once again because I use a Cantonese you know uh, to to uh, do this research instead of Mandarin and again you know a lot of them you will see that this uh, division into three is a generalization of splitting and you will see that uh, this is how the ancient Egyptians show birth right and then you see the sound kind, kind of they share the same sound for uh, Chinese, uh, they are in the same position, kneeling position, where to to show that they are female, uh, or to show the motherhood, or you will see that gradually as the uh, birth uh, occurs, it also shows a three water flow line right there, and of course you know the hieroglyph. In the Egyptian world, you will see the libation dish like this, with the two foot, you know, the bow, what is this bow, but our female uh, hip, okay? Again, the hip, this is the H, okay? And then the Chinese, you know, would have something like this as an ancestral libation bow. Uh, gradually, it become, you know, just the representation of ancestral dish, okay? So... Again, you know, a few weeks ago, I tried to show you uh, but, uh, the hidden queen, but then I didn't finish that. I want to finish it today. This is Hera right there. Again, you know, it, it was told that the H, you know, is written, but it says that it wasn't pronounced. But you, I want to show you, you know, this is the staff that she's holding and the libation dish that she's holding. And Chinese actually, um, in Cantonese pronunciation, there is a, a very interesting word, Guan, okay, Guan. You will see that this is a holder of a staff and also there is a bow right there. We write it as this. If you look at the Chinese dictionary written by uh, men, uh, they will always tell you that it's the emperor, the chief leader. But um, in um, in the colloquial world and in, in Hong Kong at least, you know, and we always use this Guan is actually used for a female name. And then uh, because it, 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 but it's not written down in dictionary. But in I mean in the real world is used by female as a name, and then um, because it's used by rule as a ruler as the female, and then uh, because of, they took it away, they made another word, they they pronounce it as guan. Okay, guan actually also means princess, princesses, and prince. You know, so this is actually connected to the bloodline. So uh, make sure that you understand that the wife of the king does not hold a thread. Okay. Okay, it is the 
princess, you know, who is the holder of the real bloodline. So this Guan, Guan right there is actually the by birth, you know, she has the rulings right, you know, by birth. So um, as you can see, you compare the sound Guan right there in own old English is Quen and then English is Queen and this is how you know they teach you how to pronounce it can you see the diff the same you know is Guan Quen Queen right there so the sound is very very ancient it doesn't belong to the English it's shared by a lot of cultures and again you know I want to show you this uh, very interesting female right there and um, you, you as you can see you know the ancient like to write the first you know alphabet and the last alphabet to mean the first and the end and then this is uh, what they call the head um, head cape or the head kupa however you pronounce it and who is she um, she is actually um, the mother of all the Troy heroes once again the hero is called hero because it's carrying the H because half of it has to connect it to a god you know not a human being so this H is very important actually this H should be carried down by by Hera but as time went by they verify Hera saying that his, uh, she's a very jealous uh, queen uh, so uh, Zeus take all, took over and then this uh, queen herself of course she's by blood having the power but then you know her H is hidden away but if you look carefully you know this is a small writing this is actually also become an H uh, this should be a big H right there if you write it in capital so there should be a hidden H there and a, a H right there at the end again there's the H at the beginning H at the end she's the, the carrier of the line so all these people who were fighting you know for Helen why because Helen is actually the bloodline you know who, who uh, you can think that where can a woman can be so beautiful that tons of men will be fighting for her it is only because if you have her you have the right to rule you know because she's the carrier of the bloodline like the queen of England she's the real carrier of the bloodline okay so I will um, show you again all different languages in writing the the H you know and from here from Sumerian you know the western world follow this line and the eastern world seem to follow this line okay and then from Latin it's uh, silence like the H you know here the Chinese also carry a similar H but then uh, it's monopolized by the by the king later okay by the Emperor so it wasn't sung again so this is silence and then this is also become the bloodline uh, feet, uh, male but line okay uh, okay so sorry again I cannot finish what I want to finish, but I will continue next week, you know, uh, go back to the YouTube and look at it again. Yeah, I hope you understand it. Thanks.